So if BPC-157 carries these risks, why are so many people interested in taking it or taking it? I think in large part that's due to the fact that um, the anecdata about BPC-157 is just so strong. People report all sorts of things like, you know, they recovered from their shoulder injury much faster. There are these kind of outrageous claims about people recovering from complete tissue transections. And um, indeed there, the animal data are pretty impressive. I went into the data that looked at sciatic nerve regrowth after injury, Achilles tendon regrowth after injury. And some of these studies in rats involved a complete transection, not just a partial tear, but a complete cut of a given ligament or tendon or nerve pathway. And indeed, the data are pretty impressive that when BPC-157 is applied systemically, right? So given you know at the level of the gut, somehow it's able to travel to the site of injury, recognize that something needs to be done there, in particular angiogenesis and fibroblast infiltration. And it does seem that on average that these tissues repair faster than they do if BPC-157 is not provided. But again, the tumor concerns and the lack of human data are a real concern that everyone should be made aware of. I do not think that BPC-157 is not without its quote unquote side effects. I do think that we are now in a state of widespread experimental use of BPC-157, even though it can be obtained clean without LPS from compounding pharmacies and by prescription. There are a lot of people taking BPC-157. And I just want to return to the point I made earlier, which is that, you know, BPC-157 is typically taken in these dosages of about 300 to 500 micrograms, you know, two to three times per week, maybe even five days per week. If you're going to go down this path of taking BPC-157, I would encourage you to take the minimal effective dose to not just simply do it every day. And certainly to not do it continuously. And of course, to monitor your other health metrics for anything that could potentially resemble cancer or tumor growth, because obviously stimulating angiogenesis for wound repair sounds like a great thing, recovering and being able to do your workouts or play your sport or um, move about more comfortably. Of course, uh, a wonderfully attractive thing to do. Isn't that what we all want? But obviously not with the trade-off of growing a tumor or developing a cancer or accelerating a cancer.